Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a Star Trails image. Now these can be a lot of fun to do, um, however, since we're going to be doing this through Photoshop, there's a lot that's involved with it, and especially if you end up having a lot of planes fly through your image, it's going to take a long time to remove those, but at the end of the day, the photo itself is going to be so much better than what you can get out of Star Stacks, for example, which doesn't allow you to eliminate unwanted aspects. In this image, uh, this was taken in Grand Teton National Park at Jenny Lake. This is about 300 photos merged together. So you can see looking north, we've got the nice uh, blur around the North Star there. And if you don't know how to take Star Trails photos yet, uh, specifically like how to use the intervalometer in your camera, if you go over to my website, uh, just petersandlinka.com slash startrails, I've got pretty much everything you need to know here and uh, hopefully that will get you comfortable with shooting the star trails. But once you have the images loaded up on your computer, you want to find where they're saved at and click on the first one, go all the way down to your last photo, shift click, that'll highlight all of them, and then open with Adobe Photoshop. Now when I'm creating my star trail images I usually start with a hundred photos depending on different circumstances I might go all the way up to 300 photos uh, but usually it takes about 22 seconds per photo and a hundred photos takes me at least an hour up to two hours if I'm doing 200 photos so expect to spend quite a bit of time outside and then once you have all these images loaded up on your computer it's going to take at least another hour of processing depending on how much uh, planes mainly were in your photos. All right, so we can see we're loaded up into Adobe Camera Raw, and you'll notice I made the image considerably darker. If I hit default, this is what it was originally. Uh, but what I found is that when you bring down the highlights and the whites and even the exposure a little bit, you're going to get more colors out of the stars. They're not just going to be bright white. and I personally think it looks really nice when you have different colors in your images rather than just a bunch of white star trails, which admittedly most of mine look like that right now. Um, so that's the method I'm going to be showing you today. But it's up to you. You can edit when you're in Adobe Camera Raw however you want. You can increase the saturation. Uh, it's really up to you. One thing I want to caution you though is when you're doing your edits here, make sure you leave off lens corrections. If you click Enable Lens Corrections or Profile Corrections, I've noticed this weird artifact that takes place. If I come over here, I did this image when I was in Yosemite. And it might be kind of hard to see in this video, but there's a weird banding issue going on over here and down here and even over here. And if I zoom in, it might make it more visible. Uh, but it's like a little square pixelated look and just... Something's clearly wrong here, and I've only noticed this effect when I've enabled lens corrections on all my photos. Uh, when I don't do that, this effect is not present. So you just want to be aware of that and make sure you don't uh, click that bo box there. But anyway, once you have one image looking good to you, come up here, hit Select All, and then hit Sync Settings and this dialog box pop up, you just have to hit OK. And then what that's going to do is apply your settings to every photo here. Once you've done that, um, you'll come down here in the lower left, you'll see Save Images, and make sure all these are still highlighted, of course, you'll notice they're light gray, so you know they're highlighted. And once you hit Save Images, you'll get this dialog box. You can just create a folder. I'll show you my folder structure. I've got in this case, the raw files are right here. You can't see them, but they're just in a Star Trails location. And then I just create a JPEG folder usually and put all my uh, saved raw files in there, the JPEGs. Since I've got almost 300 photos, I'm going to use a three digit serial number. And then I'm going to start off on 001. And that's in, it's very important that you uh, get this numbering right because it's also going to. When we start editing, we're going to need this proper file sequence. So make sure you get that correct. I like to save them as JPEGs. Some people say do it in TIFF, but 
uh, that eats up a lot of space that it's not really necessary. Uh, but once you're ready, just hit save, and then usually it'll take a while to process all those images. Uh, but once you're finished with that, come down here and just hit done. Once you've done this, there's no more saved photos. And that's going to open up Photoshop. And now, once Photoshop loads, we'll go to File, Scripts, Load Files on the Stack. And you're going to want to navigate to the folder where you just save the JPEGs. Here we'll notice 001, etc. You'll notice I have this 1 to 50 here. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, anyway, just select 1 through 50 for right now. Because what I found is I've got, let's see, 276 images here. If I had to take all 276 images and plug those into Photoshop as separate layers, even though I have a solid state drive, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, an i7 processor, it pretty much brings my computer to a halt and it makes editing a pain in the ass because everything's so slow and glitchy. So what I found is that if you just do usually 50 photos at a time, that works well. Uh, if that's even too much strain for your computer, drop it down to like 25. Uh, but in my experience, if you do it in smaller increments, it makes things a lot easier for you. So again, I selected 1 through 50. That's uh, like that. Hit OK. And now you'll see it's going to load them all as separate layers. Don't worry about either checkbox. Just hit OK. And now Photoshop is going to go through and you'll see it's starting to bring in each one of the photos is a separate layer. Once that finishes, we're just going to change the blending mode to lighten and instantly our star trails are going to pop out at us. But what you're going to want to do is, while that's loading, head over to, again here you can see all my raw files, you'll want to find your JPEGs and remember since we saved them as 001 etc, now we can really see what's going on in Photoshop because what I'm going to do is open up the full the uh, the photo here I'm just going to scroll through these and I'm going to be looking for plane trails or anything else that's going to distract from the star trails in my photo and then let's see eventually one comes out there we can we can see one streaking across the sky so I'm going to go back to right when it first entered the scene and we'll notice it right down here so now I can see this is image 32. So Photoshop is finished. Uh, let's get back to where we were. Again, if you hold down Shift and click the last layer, they're all highlighted. Change this to Lighten. When you click Lighten, you're instantly going to see the star trails. But you'll also notice these plane trails are pretty obvious. So again, uh, I'm going to go back to my photo here. 32 is when my plane just comes into the scene. So I'm going to go to the corresponding layer, 32. I'm going to take a black paintbrush, and since we're on light and blend mode, we can actually just use a black paintbrush and paint out the plane trail. I'm going to go down to layer 33, paint it out, 34. And I'm just going to keep doing that over and over and over again. And you want to make sure you use a, a smaller paintbrush ideally just a little bit larger than the plane trail. If not, you might accidentally wipe out little portions. As you can see there, it's pretty faint. Uh, but you just you don't want to use a huge brush and screw anything up. One other thing I want to caution you on is if you notice these weird, there's a weird gap at the front of every star trail, that tells me I screwed something up at the beginning. So let me try layer one. If I hide that, that fixes the issue. So already I fixed a gap and that problem is solved. So you want to really make sure you zoom in and double check everything looks okay. Um, but again, the main thing we're doing is just removing these plane trails. And all I'm doing is looking through my JPEGs, finding where these planes are at, and then going to the corresponding layer and painting them out. In this case, layer 50, which is our last layer. Right over here. And I can see it just stops there, so that tells me it's clearly that one. And th again, this is why when you break this into 50 or 25 uh, photo increments, it makes this process a lot easier. You don't have such dense star trails that the plane trails are hard to see. And uh, it's just really going to make your life a lot easier.
anyway, once you're done clearing the star trails on all 50 photos, you'll come up, right click on any of them, and then hit either merge visible or flatten image. And now this will be, I like to call this 1 through 50.tiff. I'll save it as a TIFF file. And again, if I go back to my folder structure here, you'll see this is after I removed all the plane trails. And this in cat, or rather, this incorporates, again, 1 through 50. Now I'm going to go up to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And now I'm going to do 51 through 100. And you can do any kind of increment you want, just keep it uh, something that you'll remember. Hit OK. Do the same exact thing again. And uh, just keep erasing those plane trails. Once you have all of your TIFF files done, so you've essentially done all the editing on every single photo, what I like to do is, since this is my 1 to 50, this is my original, I'm just going to open up the other ones, so 51 to 100. In this case, I had to do quite a few just because I took so many photos. All right, that looks like all of them. So now I have my, in this case, one, two, three, four, five main TIFF files. If I hold down the Shift key and just drag these to my first layer, I'm going to get the same effect as if I had done all of these in one frame. Again, I want to select all these layers, change this to lighten. And now, again, this is exactly what it would have looked like if I had done all 275 photos in the same window, but it would have destroyed my computer and made everything a lot more difficult. So this is the way I recommend doing it. Once you have all your layers in here, you can just flatten that. And now you're ready to do whatever editing you want. You can throw a selective color on here, and you can really bring out the cyan color if you want. Uh, do whatever looks good to you. You can increase the vibrance. One thing I like to do is you'll notice when I zoom way in, it's kind of pixelated and there's kind of some weird noise. What you could do is if you're in Adobe CC is go to Camera Raw Filter. Now we're back in Camera Raw. If I come over here to the, the Detail tab, I can increase the luminance usually like 20 or 30 versus nothing. It just helps to take some of the edge off. And I'll show you another technique you can use as well. Honestly, that didn't work as well as I would have hoped. So I'll show you the other technique is to duplicate the layer, come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I usually set this as just small enough to take some of that edge off of that, usually no more than one pixel. I'll hit OK. Now since I don't want to blur down there, uh, I'll take a, a black paintbrush and there's better ways to do this. Oops, Make a layer mask of course. Uh, you can get really precise with this if you want, but I really don't care that much in this photo. And if the effect is a bit strong, you can always lower the opacity. Again, there's the before and the after. That looks good, 60%, just to take some of that pixelated edge off. But you can, you know, add a color lookup. Sometimes those are kind of fun to do. They're kind of hit or miss, though. But that's really all there is to Star Trails. Again, this is a much more in-depth method than using star stacks, but we have so much more control over the final image. 
if we had just done the uh, the star or the star stacks example, I'll actually show you what it might have looked like. Uh, let's see if I have it. This is actually a video I created using star stacks. Um, but again, you'll notice the plane trails in the upper right, and they just keep coming in. So that can be kind of fun, though, to use star stacks to do a little video like that. And here's just a normal time lapse. Now I have done other ones where there's just so many planes going across, it literally took me two or three hours to go through and paint out every single one. And eventually you get to the point where, unless if it's really obvious, you just kind of ignore it because it's taking forever. Uh, but that's really all you have to do. Again, if you want to learn more, you can go over to my website. And I've got a full tutorial over there for actually taking the photos. So thanks for watching, guys. And I uh, hope that helped you guys out.